Hello and welcome back to another episode of the BDB Podcast. I am your host, Nicholas Bailey, where we are on a mission to create three-dimensional businessmen, businessmen that aren't just prospering in their business, but actually are out there transforming the world through their health and their relationships where they become truly three-dimensional and actually become truly successful. I'm here with an awesome guest. I'm in his office. If you guys know who he is, you'll know this office then. Uh, we just did a huge tour. If you missed it, you're gonna wanna go check it out on the video version. If you're listening to the audio, dump that thing afterwards and go back and check out the video. This guy is a seven-figure marketer. By the time this is coming out, it's probably pushing eight figures, I'm just saying. And it's been cool seeing what he's been doing, where he's been able to go out there and get results himself, which is huge when we talk about mentors and relationships, but also has been able to bridge the gap of educating other people in marketing and having them see results in, as well. So welcome to the show. Billy Jean is Woo! marketing. Yeah, welcome. Wait, man. I like that intro. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, tr I yeah, try, yeah, man. I feel, I feel, feel good. That's what it's meant to do. It's a truly good intro. It it's supposed it. to make you feel badass. Yeah, it, I feel badass right now. Yeah. Maybe a little overly badass, right? But like, yeah, badass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, it's one of those things where you're like, dang, I wonder who's coming up right now. <laughs> yeah, who like, the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. Cool. Well, we just did a, a whole tour of your office. It's been cool. It's not totally done yet, but there's been a lot of cool things going on. Yeah. And a tons of things were kind of like rolling through my head that I want to ask you on the show. But just for everyone else's context, maybe just tell us a little bit about like, we both grew up in the same city of San Diego. Yeah, that's it's funny. a huge city. You can drive for like an hour and still not hit like the end of San Diego. Yeah. So how was life growing up? Because a lot of people think like, this dude's got this whole office. Something must be different in his past right. that I can't relate to, but it's not true. I love that question. Um, man, I, uh, I had a, a unique upbringing in the fact that I saw two worlds. So both of my parents, uh, love them, great people, uh, they both grew up on welfare. And I saw my dad, he's always been in car business, so I saw him progressively take us from like little tiny apartment and not so nice neighborhood to like now they live on a golf course through his thing. But why I say like I have a unique perspective is because growing up, you know, with seeing my aunt, like not, I didn't see it, thank God, but uncle got murdered, my dad's, my grandfather murdered, you know, you see drugs and all this other stuff, and you're exposed to it at a pretty young age. And luckily, my parents had, they really took care of me. They put me in private Catholic school my whole life. So I got this really weird experience where at home and with the family, I saw all these other things, but then at like St. Martin's and St. Augustine's and the University of San Diego where I went to college, completely different world. At University of San Diego, I was meeting some of the wealthiest people on the planet. And I'm looking like, here's two humans. What's the difference between them and them? And a lot of it is education. And that's why I really got obsessed with learning. And I just like, I just look at one side and say, God, I wish you had more perspective on them. And I wish to talk to the other side. I wish you had more perspective on them. And yeah, it was, it was a weird balance. So, so I maybe tattoos. even define then like education, because you're like, it's a big statement to be like, I think the difference or, or the yeah. answer is education, which obviously rolls into what you're doing, yeah. which is awesome. So we talk about three-dimensional businessman. It's having a business well, that creates that impact that you're trying to solve. Right. So I'll, I'll give you like an example. Um, I'm, I'm sitting in a class, junior year of college at the University of San Diego. It's like finance class or something. But anyways, the teacher comes out and she says, hey, like how many of you are investing into like the stock market? Literally almost the entire class raises their hand. I live, I leave, I left the class. I was so intimidated. Yo, like there was no one, no one when I was growing up that ever talked about the stock market or knew anything about it. Like you hear the expression, you're the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. And I don't think people really take the time to think that through. Like if the average is you're seeing prison, drugs, murder, and then you take the other person whose average is like working class job, and you think that that's the same thing, you're fucking missing a serious amount of perspective due to your experiences. And so, for example, you hear a lot of people talk about, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, right? You heard that quote there. And I'm just like, you have no idea what somebody else's bootstraps feel like. You have no idea how 
difficult or easy that may be. Now, on the other side, is, regardless of your situation, you need to take control because you're the only person who can change it. But I think there's definitely a lack of empathy and a lack of understanding for people who are in very challenging situations. Um, and then on the other side, I think there's a, a lot of resentment for the people who were born in better situations. And it's like, why are you hating on somebody for being born into something good, right? So that's what I meant by like, you have these two different perspectives. I feel like I uniquely have been exposed to both. And I just feel like I wish everybody had that. So I have two tattoos. One says vision and one says perspective on my wrist. And uh, that's why it has to do with what I was just explaining. Yeah, just to talk to the brotherhood, like the, one of the things that we talk about with mentors and relationships is the best people to learn from aren't the people that just had it easy. That's cool and it should be recognized. But if you're not having it just happen easily, you're not just gifted, then you're not going to understand. They're not going to understand how to teach you how to bridge that gap because they haven't gone through it. You also don't want to learn from the people that just suck. Like they never ever made it, they failed at everything and they wanna tell you all about how this is what to avoid and this is what you gotta, don't, don't talk to girls because I've had bad relationships with the girls over and over again. Like you don't wanna listen to that person, you wanna listen to the person that went through hard things like Billy was talking about and then made it to the other side where you see him here today and that's why he's being interviewed. And obviously I have trust of that, but to, to see a guy that not only experienced both sides, yeah. but also went through times where it wasn't easy to then having success. Like that's the best person I believe we yeah. can learn from, which is why you're here. Oh, uh, thank you, man. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, there's a lot of luck in my success now. It sounds weird probably coming from me because like on our core values upstairs, uh, core value number one is everything is my fault. Meaning everything, you take accountability for everything in your life because that's the only way you can change it. But I'd be ridiculous not to acknowledge that I got lucky because my parents sent me to the private Catholic school. They gave me the opportunity and they paid for my college. Wow, what extreme luck. But because I saw how close I could have been in a completely different situation, my drive for this company has a lot to do with duty and social responsibility. I feel like because of the deck of cards that I was given, I have a responsibility to achieve massively and then help people. Like I have a duty, especially people who may have a certain background, or especially like African Americans, black people, like it just doesn't apply to black people. But unfortunately, if you look at television over the last X amount of decades, most of the time when you saw an African American person, if they were successful, what were they doing? Playing sports or doing music. So for me, creating another cool, fun, helpful way for people to achieve financial freedom that's not those two things, I, that's my duty. I have a duty to make sure that my shit is, I dot my eyes, I cross my T's and I'm a leader in that way. Does that make sense? Absolutely, um, I, and the luck thing is cool because that's where they say it's where preparation, preparation meets opportunity. Exactly. Right, you had the opportunity, but yep. then you actually took a hold of it. And you talked about the five people you surround yourself with. And so dynamically, like, how are you making sure today that you're embodying that statement of being around five people that you really feel like is driving your life in the right direction? Because I know that, yeah. I, I always say like entrepreneurship can be lonely, but like when you're grinding away and working on stuff, like you're not trying to just go out every single day and hang out with like new friends or whatever. Right. And so how are, how are you balancing that right now? Well, Cause I, I feel like there's some people that have good people around them that aren't seizing the opportunity. Yeah. The opportunity is there, but their preparation isn't. And then there's other people that are just grinding away and don't have their relationships and they don't sure. understand why. You brought up a good point. You said like, especially when you're grinding, when you have time to meet people, et cetera. See, the, the whole quote about like, you're the average of the five people that you uh, hang out with the most, it's actually much deeper than that. It's you're the average of everything around you. It's really you're the average of your environment. That really should be the quote. Meaning what you listen to will change the way you think. Um, what you're reading, uh, what you're visually seeing every single day. And so if you don't have an average people, like physically someone you feel like you can go talk to, you can go to YouTube right now and be in a conversation with Tony Robbins every single day. You can watch badass podcasts like this every single day or listen to it, whatever it is. So control your own environment, meaning protect your brain. Self-talk is probably the biggest reason why you do what you do or why you don't do what you do. And you can control that conversation by changing your environment. So that's something that I would tell everybody, like, get on that shit right away. If you're listening to a bunch of like music that just talks about fucking partying all the time and all the bullshit, that's what you're going to do. Like, I didn't, I'm the first one to turn up, so like, I get it. <laughs> but you have to understand, like, maybe that's 10% of your time, but 90% is listening to business podcasts and fall asleep listening to books on Audible. 
See what I'm saying? Once you start making those switches, then the conversation becomes easy. And now with the internet, with like private Facebook groups and everything else and communities and meetups and all these things, you can do it. It's not easy. It is simple, but it's not easy. So going back to your journey then, you obviously went to college, didn't totally finish no. from what I, from what I read. I saw, you, I saw him crush in college out there. <laughs> so, you know, what was that dynamic like then? I know that you had, you used to talk about your success, you've been lucky because you had opportunity. I think that's just thanking yeah, yeah, yeah. you, being grateful for exactly. what you had. And it's different for everyone. I know that we're in a holiday style season. That's why there's a, there's a Christmas tree right behind us. Yeah. And I, was, I posted yesterday, I said, there's someone right now in the middle of Zimbabwe smiling his face off yep. while someone else in America is mad because their Ferrari is the wrong color. Yep. Like that they didn't get the color they wanted. Yep. And it's the weirdest thing and like it's total perspective change. Yep. So growing up and going to school, you know, what, what would you say is like the turning point or what was the time that you knew like you'd be an entrepreneur, that you'd go out here and do the things that you're doing? Did other people see this or like? Yeah, I, I, was, a, I was a very mediocre student. You know, I got like a 3-0, but I skated by, I procrastinated on everything, da, da, da. Um, I think my first entrepreneurial moment when I knew it was gonna happen is because I was a salesman. Like a sale, like, and my dad was always a salesman. I saw him make good money, but I also saw him not be able to control certain aspects of his time because he was on a schedule, working with someone else, and there was some things. So anyways, I was in college freshman year, and I was living in the dorm rooms. And uh, sophomore year, everybody that was on my floor wanted to move to the beach and get a beach house. And I was like, hell yeah, let's move to the beach. I'm in, da-da-da-da-da. And it ended up being cheaper than it was to stay on campus. So I told my parents, I was like, hey, can I live here instead? Because they were helping me financially. And they're like, no way, you're not living on the beach. Are you crazy? Because when they grew up, because they're from San Diego, born and raised, when they grew up, Mission and PB, those were not like hangout places. That was druggies, trouble, nothing good. So hey, they had this horrible perspective of what it was like. And uh, my dad says, fine, if you want to live there, you can pay for it. Now here's the thing, I found this sick house on the beach for all of us to live on. We had to give the deposit in three days, which was like 1,500 bucks, my portion or whatever. And I was like, how the fuck am I gonna find that? I'm done, I'm clearly not going to the beach. And then I just had this moment, I said, you know what? Okay, and it was really like just mad at my dad. Okay, you don't think I can do that? You don't think I can figure that out? Okay, we're gonna see. So, I had my first entrepreneurial moment. Uh, each dorm area, like you can live in different dorm areas on campus, had their own t-shirts. And so, our dorm area, we didn't have a t-shirt. And I'll never forget, literally, the only thing anybody remembered about living in my dorm area is to get to the classes, we had to walk up this giant fucking staircase that everybody hated to do. So uh, the area we lived in was called the Valley. So the girl I was dating at the time, she could draw a little bit. So the front of the shirt said the Valley. On the back, it had a staircase and a kid, a stick figure looking up at the staircase with a backpack on. Cause that's like all we knew of it, right? And that was a shirt. And so went to this place called T-Shirt Mart. I had it made for 17 bucks. I got one made. I put the shirt on. I fucking went door to door and I knocked on every single person's door and I said, hey, everybody else has got a T-shirt. Here's the one that I want to get for us. I made it, I designed it, I'm wearing it. Do you like it? They see it, they laugh. And I say, do you want to put a $20 deposit on your shirt right now? Like pay in advance or something like that. So they'd give me 20 bucks, I'd take down their size. Once I had the cash, I could use that to fulfill the orders and that was it. Long story short, three grand in like two days. Boom. I gave that deposit check, so proud. My dad was mad at the time, like, oh, you were behind my back and did, no, you told me to pay for it. If I can pay for it and I can make it happen, what you talking about? So I think later he cooled down and realized, okay, that's pretty good, you know what I mean? And then, uh, then it went to, okay, well, good job, you paid the deposit, now how the fuck are you gonna pay your rent for the year? So he's like, you better figure it out again. I said, damn. So I got a summer job selling cars. And he made a call, he did uh, give me the interview at a dealership, so I went in, and they took me on almost as like a summer project. I became the number one sales guy uh, first month. Yeah, and I, I think I brought in 20 grand that summer. And I took the 20 grand that I made and I used that money to pay for my rent for the rest of the year. And I paid in advance, because I didn't have any credit. So she's like, I can't let you sign, you have no credit. I said, what if I pay up front? She's like, okay, can you do that? I said, if you give me the summer to do it, I'll do it. Uh, and she said, okay. So she took a flyer on me and said, all right, well, if you think you can do it, and she, Anna Patsman, shout out to you if you're somehow watching this, she gave me a shot. She gave me those three month window and uh, she got her money. That's pretty interesting because I, I hear such a buzzword now of what am I really supposed to do? Mm. Like, I'm sure you've heard this in your community of like, man, is like digital marketing my thing? Like, is it my calling? Is it my purpose? Is it what I was born to do? And it's very interesting that I hear the majority of stories like we had to do things. You know, my wife and I got married 
and I had no job, I had no income, we didn't think about being a power couple, starting a business together. Right. We had no other choice. Right. That was it. Like we had to pay the bills. So we went so out we made there. It happen. We charged the credit card, bought shirts on the credit card, and took everyone's cash mm -hmm. because people would pay cash for it, and I just kept charging up the credit card, taking the cash, paying for things. I love this. Because I, I just thought like that's what I had to do. So what do you think is like bridging the gap? I've so, well, I'm, real quick, I'm, Damon, Damon John, just to interject there, like his book, The Power of Broke. This is exactly what it's about. Is like so here's the problem. You come in a situation like mine and now I have cash, right? But I'll find myself trying to solve problems with cash. It's easy. Fuck it. Write a check for it. Da da da. It's a good way to go out of business, people. Always exercise the power of broke. Like and, and Grant Cardone would talk about that, how he literally will spend his money to make himself broke again. So he's always acting in that state. Because what happens is when you're broke, creativity is created. You got creative when you had, like, I got to pay these bills. You had responsibility. You were forced to get creative. So you did. I wanted to live on the beach. My desire was high. I was forced to get creative. Creativity is, is the number one resource that any entrepreneur can have. And so it sometimes is forced upon you. So define the power of broke then, because that's, that's, I think that's so good. I, I can't tell you how many men come to me, probably at least 10 a day. Yeah. 10 messages a day come in of, I've been working really hard. I've started all these different things, but each one I've jumped into, they didn't work, and I just don't know if it's what I'm called to do. I wanna find like that one thing that I'm supposed to oh, do, dude, that's called and they search for it forever, Yeah. and they never find it. And I'm like, ah, if you had breakthrough, would you like doing the actions? And the answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. You know, digital marketing, if it doesn't work, no wonder it's not fun. But if you kept doing it until you got results, then it's Because losing fun. sucks ass. Yeah. Losing sucks ass, people, it fucking sucks. <laughs> so you're not gonna like things when you're losing at them. But uh, this is how shiny object syndrome is created. So people talk about that all the time. It's like, I have shiny object syndrome. Look at it. No, it's not shiny object syndrome. Is you have uh, a, a bigger syndrome than that. And it's called when you fall, you don't get the fuck back up. Meaning here's how shiny object syndrome comes about. You're doing something like digital marketing. It looked easy on the webinar when it was sold to you. It looked easy when you're looking at the people posting on Instagram because you see the destination. So you start to do it. You're on your journey, you have a little bit of success, maybe you don't, but one way or another, something goes wrong. It's not, you're not, you're not getting the result that you want fast enough. And so instead of when you hit that brick wall going through it, like a true entrepreneur does, you say, well, fuck it. Maybe this idea is just messed up. Let me try something else. So the reason why you have shiny object syndrome is because you are a chronic quitter. You fucking quit on everything when it gets hard. And the reason why you keep in that circle is because everything's hard. Nothing is easy. When, it doesn't matter what business. People always say, is the agency harder? Is the teaching easier? It's all fucking hard. It's all fucking hard. But when it gets hard, I figure it the fuck out and I exercise the power of broke and get creative. That's what everybody's missing. Everybody's so soft these days. No, it's too hard. You're weak and you're lazy. Doctors, 10, 20, 10 years of education, negative $300,000 in debt to get to where they want to go, three years of residency, then they have fellowship and all this other shit before they make a fucking dime, 13 years. Bitch, you, you, did, you did one course for 400 bucks and now it didn't work out because you didn't get rich in three weeks and now you're crying like a little bitch. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's real. Like, that's exactly what happens. People it's so annoying. Dude, it's like, one month, 13 years is what doctors put in. $300,000 in debt. You're missing 300 bucks. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. That's what you need to hear. Shut up. So, sorry if that was So, so let, maybe we'll, <laughs> let's jump into crushing college thing because yeah. I, think, I think that needs to be heard, mm -hmm. right? I, a lot of times when people jump into BDB in our community, I'll let them know, if you don't want to quit or hate me at some point during this whole journey, I didn't do a good job. Yep. So that they know the expectation. Yes. I'm like, you're going to yes. want to quit and you're not going to want to talk to me at some point. Yep. And if they're above that, they're like, I'm doing freaking good. Yeah. Like, this is working. Yeah. And just because when we get to that moment, I'm like, we talked about this mm -hmm. because uh, I'm sitting here. I'm like, man, like this is really tough. You know, I had a conversation today. Someone said, man, I just felt like a lot of the things I was doing was draining. And I was like, dude, you think I want to drive to San Diego right before the end of the year to, to like come down here? Of course, it's fun now that I'm here. But it's not like the journey is not fun. Hold on. Can I rant for a second on this? Like, I love what you said. It's like, because this is the thing. I remember I talked about self-talk and how powerful it is. So what I see a lot in the life space, in the life coaching space, right, is people, this is the fucking favorite quote right now. It just kills me. People say, you know, I did try that, but it just felt out of alignment. It didn't feel good. Get out of alignment. Mm, shut the fuck up. 
You mean working didn't feel like this is part of the game, right? Like you're, you're not going to like some of the things that you do, period. And while you suck at them, you're really not going to like them. But you have to eat ass. You have to suck a little bit to get good. Like that's the game. So fuck your feelings. Fuck your alignment, right? Like get good at the thing first and then decide. You know what I mean? Like I just, people are too, too quick to make an excuse for themselves. Yeah, it just didn't feel good. Like, people, what do you want? You want more sales, right? But you're like, mm, selling? It's just not aligned with what I want to do. I just, I'm not into sales. That's out of my, shut, what are you talking, shut up. <laughs> so and true. by the way, you can't be out of alignment. But usually when you're saying it, you're just leveraging it as an excuse, like, you know, to get out of doing the hard thing. Yeah, and there's always something that I'm sure that you did things. You weren't as good at selling cars as you are at teaching and doing digital marketing. Sure. There was, but there wasn't a, I am completely a failure, and so I should move on to something because this doesn't work at all. Mm. I feel like what you said, you just barely said it, but it's something that I corely believe, is if you commit to something, have success in it, get good at it, mm. and then choose to move on. Exactly. Have a level of success. You went out there, you sold cars. You're like, I don't want to sell cars forever, right. and so That's now right. I'm going to move on. Yep. But it wasn't, I was on the law, I didn't sell any cars, and mm. so because of that, this doesn't work for me. And also, too, for everybody, there's... No such thing as a million dollar idea, just million dollar execution. So anything that you do, anything that you do, anything that you do, you can make a million dollars doing anything. So stop trying to choose like what's the path or what's the coolest. Well, you can, you can make a ton of money doing all of it. You saw you in New, New Zealand, they, they boxed up air and send it to China. Like New Zealand air, Yeah. they put it into a jar. What? And they shipped it to China so they could get that like one, Clean breath of air. <laughs> is yeah. that a real thing? Real thing. Well, there you go. And then what Sell about the, and then pet rocks as well? That was chia a thing pets? for a little while. Everything. Well, chia pets is even cooler than a rock. Who the was rock it? Was it Cards like, Against yeah. Humanity that literally sold shit? Yeah. Or it, they so, no. Here's what they did. Cards Against Humanity had the best promo I think I've ever seen in my life. They sold nothing. You literally go to their website, and on April, I think they do it once a year. It's either April Fools or one of the holidays or something. You can Google it, but they sell nothing. And on their site. You go there and you put in your credit card information and they say, and the, whole, the ad copy is so funny. They're just like, as soon as you put your credit card in, you're going to get nothing. You understand that you will receive nothing. And I think they did like 60 grand or something like that. Of course, something crazy, something crazy, right? So you can sell anything. So bring me through the personal dynamics thing because we're like jumping into business, like what you have yeah. to do, it's required. Like there's status quo of what you need to do to be successful, sales, you have to do it to win. Yeah. End of story. So on the personal side, obviously you have a daughter that roams around here a lot and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, tell me how that shifted everything up in your life and what you learned from it. Because three-dimensional to us is like so many people when they're in survival mode think that money will solve all their problems. Mm. But when I was sitting there, I was, I, in the, I was actually in the restroom right before Christmas and I was thinking about all the things that I got for Christmas and I was like, man, if I didn't have these core things that I can't buy, I'd be so pissed right now, so sad. Yep. There's the best things in life you can't physically buy. 100%. And so what was that dynamic life? And what, what did you learn from that? Daddy-daughter stuff, yeah. boy. Um, I consistently learn from my daughter every day. But what you realize is if you don't have a child right now and you're watching this, I highly recommend that you go all in. Because when you have a child, now you have to... See, the challenge of the child and the blessing with the child is there's only one form of currency that they see, and it's time. You can't buy your way out of it, you can't outsource it, it's just time. And it's non-negotiable time. So the biggest challenge, last thing I've learned through is like, I have to run my company without 24 hours on the clock. Again, power of broken time in, in this regards. And it's forced me to be creative and just be a lot more efficient with my time and hiring and things like that. But um, Going all in on my daughter has taught me a different level of patience, <laughs> a different level of, of love. I mean, it's, it, dude, this is a fucking trip, the whole thing. I, I got my, she's about to be three. It's weird. I just, I was out, man. I was out, like, going out a lot and shit. You know, it was, it's weird. Now I come home. Also, too, you need double the energy. <sighs> like, I can't even explain it. It's a real thing. Like, yeah. you go all into work. You know that feeling when you come home from work and you're like, I'm tired. I just want to lay down. No, yeah. we're playing Barbie. We're playing Barbie. We're, we're, we're running around. We're hide and go seek. We're, you know, now we got a piano. It's piano lessons. And it takes just as much energy, if not more. 
So you have to go into this second shift, I call it, and you have to find a different level of energy that you know is is challenging. So um, I don't know, man. It's it's been the greatest blessing, right? Uh, but also too, a lot of people hype it up. Um, and, and this sounds bad. Like I'm not hyping up my daughter. I love my she's my everything. But like what I'm telling you is, I want to say they glamorize uh, being a parent. Here's why: because to the public, if I went and I posted right now on social media and said, God, I can't stand being a fucking dad. What would people say? They'd be, they, they would look down on He's me. He's a bad person. You would, you would experience a different type of judgment because family and mainstream media, such like, it's the everything. If you listen to any movie, it's always the greatest moral, the greatest theme is family. For, it's fucking everywhere. So if you don't like that thing, you're a bad person. Let me tell you, there is shit about parenting that you can't fucking stand. There is, it's, Especially when they're young, because my daughter's only three. When zero to one and a half, she can't reciprocate the love, or there's no like thank yous, or like naturally like, thank you, daddy, and it's like it melts your heart. You don't have that before. You just have this thing that's crying and peeing and pooping and shitting, and then you're you're trying to balance your time. You can't go out anymore. You got to get a babysitter. Now you're trying to manage relationship dynamics. It's very very hard, and I say that because. Once you're honest about the situation, you can actually start getting help. And I think everybody, if you're going into kids, you with this idea that we'll just figure it out is the stupid fucking game plan that you could ever have in your life. Find people who have found, done it successfully and have the relationship that you uh, admire, that you want, and find out what were you doing. You need strategy in it, just like you need it in business. So all of that has just been a learning process. <laughs> so, so now that you talked about like learning from it, uh, you just did a weight loss challenge where you're like giving yeah. up like a million dollars if you didn't hit your goal. And how much then did she or that situation, like did she inspire you at all to be you, able to do that's that? That's an interesting question. It? And like that's been hard for me, like the health thing too, because like right now I'm like not give a fuck mode. And then like before I was like give a fuck mode, get back in shape. It's been a hard thing for me just to like go all in on consistency. And a lot of people will say like, hey, a good way to do it is like your child be your motivation. I'll be honest with you. To me, the only thing that can motivate you in business, health, life, is yourself. I think you have to have selfish reasons to do it because it, it's just the number one instinct on the planet is self-preservation. And so I think sometimes when you make it about your kid, sometimes it's not enough. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Like some people say that. They're like, hey, if you just focus on your kid, you'll want to do it. Well, don't you yes. think that every every broke husband wants to provide That's for his wife? That's what I'm saying, wife, exactly. But like, it's not enough to just like want to take care of exactly. their wife. It's got to be you. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's been a big thing is as an entrepreneur, it's, I think that's been the hardest thing with health wise. Like for 90% of my life, I was the most in shape person that I knew. But as entrepreneurship comes, I got a team of 25. My priority was taking care of the team. And it's like, you know, relationship at the time was taking care of the relationship. And then it was daughter taking care of that. And then never take care of Billy. So I went through, you know, a good year of like, just like, I don't want to call it depression. I think that's like a little term is used a little too much. But it was hard to find. I was experiencing success, but I wasn't being fulfilled. And it's because I was pouring out so much and I forgot to fill up. You know what I'm saying? So the weight loss challenge that I did was for me to focus on me and to fill up again. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know, man. I, it, was, it was a powerful lesson for me in 2018. It's probably my greatest takeaway is, Billy, you got to focus on you. So in 2019, I'm going all in on being selfish so that I can build a stronger foundation for everybody around me. So it's like we talk about it as... How are you supposed to accomplish 100% of your destiny at 60% of your potential, mm -hmm. yep. right? And it all comes down to you being the number one priority. People think, I need to take care of my kids, take care of my family, take care of my business, take care of the employees. But if you're drained at the end of the mm -hmm. day and can't do anything, then you're showing up like not fully 100%. Happened to me but how do you, have, how do you get at 100%? You have, to, you have yeah. to go out there, well, maybe even answer that for you. Because like, yeah. sometimes we go out there and at first, momentum's going in a different direction, what I yeah. found. You take time off, and the first three days, you hate it all. You're right. like, oh, man, like, why am I even doing this? I need to go back to work because you've only found fulfillment through like, the actions of going out there making money and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And I fell into that. I'm like, I only feel good because like, my momentum's pushing mm -hmm. towards only feeling good about doing these actions. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you would say going all in on you, investing in yourself looks yeah. like? Well, 
I think I love the way you've been saying it all the time is a three dimensional. And so like for me in 2019, the goal was very simple is six pack, eight figures, number one dad. That's it. Six pack, eight figures, number one dad. I guarantee you, I'll hear it right here on camera. I guarantee we'll do an interview again in a year and I will accomplish all three. Be three dimensional. Be three dimensional, baby. I'll give uh. you a t-shirt when you hit it. Okay, I like okay. it. Uh, Billy There's Jean the real motivation. It's not my daughter, it's the fucking t-shirt. That's Bam! Awesome. <laughs> and it's very interesting to hear the dynamic of like personal life and how it ties in as businessmen. Want to hear something oh. funny? When we did the weight loss challenge, that was the same thing. We had our the same month. We had our first million dollar month. Isn't that crazy? So it didn't elephant, take away. Elephant, no, it didn't take away at all. Right? I was more focused. I was sharp. I was all in, and that. So it was all. there any time during the challenge that you were like hated it? Like you didn't want oh, to yeah, focus every day. on it? <laughs> every fucking day. Hell yeah! Every fucking day. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then you, you know, you just start to focus on the benefits, but the pain doesn't stop, right? The pain doesn't stop. Uh, but you search your perspective and, and you start to enjoy it as opposed to, you know, find it as a weight and a burden. This is interesting. So for the guys out there, no one wants to not provide for their family. Right. No guy wants to go out there and not provide for his wife. Right. And, uh, and even not provide for himself. Yeah. How can he find that selfish motivation then to be able to go out there and do it? Because the result yeah. is the same. Uh, I have a mentor, he's a Navy SEAL, just a Navy SEAL instructor, lives right down here. His name's Yost, and he will tell you that he was a paramedic and one of the best. And he did it through being 100% selfish. He just wanted to be the best paramedic ever. And he asked me, like, do you want the paramedic that shows up and cares the most about you, but is slower, or would you like the paramedic that's the quickest, will get them to the hospital the quickest in the best, most efficient way, that save doesn't care about the save person? Save my life. <laughs> you want the person that's going to save the life the quickest? The person who was helping the most was the person that actually didn't have any motivation. He's 100% selfish. Mm -hmm. It was him. He's like, I, I want to get the job done correctly. I don't really care about that person necessarily. I care about doing my job right mm -hmm. and being the best I can be at my job. That's the person I want to save. That's interesting. So how do we operate in a little bit more of that selfishness and have the balance, of course. Yeah, I'm sure so. that there's a person that's too selfish for themselves and go overboard on this side. Yeah. And there's other people that are kind of too selfless and they think they're helping out. I, I actually did a cooler. One, I got help. I, I can't stress enough. The reason, I tell you what guys, the reason why you're broke, if you are broke, I'm not saying that. I don't know who's <laughs> watching, right? Like, or whatever, like, and I meant broke physically, mentally, whatever the fuck it is. You must put like a Dan Pena what, on Whatever that it is, it's, it's because you're trying to figure it out by yourself. Anybody who I've ever met who's um, struggling with anything, it's because they're using ignorance and arrogance to, to guide their way. Arrogance meaning you really think that without help you can accomplish X, Y, and Z. If you look at the quotes from any successful person, and when someone wins an Oscar and award, what is the, what is the first thing they do? They thank all the people who help them. If you're trying to figure out a problem by yourself, you're foolish. You will lose everything. But fuck, I digress. I, I literally was just about to transition into something. Run your question back. So you were talking about uh, just how you can't accomplish anything on your own. What was I? I had such something I really wanted to drive home to. No, we can wait for this because this will be good. Ah, oh, gosh, damn it. Um, yes. You got help. Oh, yeah, I got help. Oh, there help. we go. Thank you. That was great. See, that's, that's why you see, can't do it alone. Um, so I got help and I, because I was experiencing success outside looking in, people would think and say that I had fucking penthouse and this office and team and stupid Ferraris and all that shit. It's not stupid, it's great. Um, but all these things, so I was experiencing success, but I was still feeling unhappy. And what you realize is I got help, I hired this coach, his name's Jim Bunch, shout out to Jim Bunch, and he really helped me understand the difference between success and fulfillment. And we did this exercise, um, I, I, it's his thing, but we did this exercise which essentially helped me identify the five core values that drive me. And it was super powerful, it took about like two hours and I had these five things of clarity is, hey, when I am doing these five things, I feel the most fulfilled, I am the most happy, et cetera. And one was like safety and security for others. Um, two was having fucking fun experiences. Um, three was social responsibility. Uh, four was, um, there, there's two other ones, a little more personal, but uh, I had these five core values and I realized every single time I was most happy in my life, I was helping the most, these five needs were met. Having clarity on what it was that actually made me tick, like, changed everything. But I could have never figured that out by myself. I didn't even know there was an exercise to do that. Like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So I got help. 
So going back to your vision of like crushing college, like you talked about, and you talked about the doctor who goes to school for 10 years and then comes out $300,000 in debt and the process that they go through. Yeah. And then what you're doing now with helping other people to become fantastic marketers. I believe I used to be against, I pretty much went against the grain mm -hmm. and that's what made me successful. Then I started going against the grain of what actually worked as well, which didn't work so well. <laughs> and, and so a lot of times it'd be like, I would go out there and be like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to go out there and like do it completely different than everyone. I don't want to be a marketer. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to be known as a marketer. I want to be known as something else. Now I'm further identifying myself as, wow, like I'm catching trends. I'm, I'm leading a team mm -hmm. and we're doing it through marketing to get <laughs> ourselves out there so that people get connected to us so that then they get connected to our community and invest 100%. so that we can have a great deliverable and have these people stay for a long time. Mm. And so what are you doing now to like, curve this perception of having to go to college how are you solving the problem like you have the gene pool you have these people that are crushing it like yeah dude i i you just so when it comes to advertising and marketing um you have to take a stance and i realize like all the biggest brands influencers anything that you, you see the biggest ones typically take a stand for something. And when you take a stand for something, uh, half the people will love you and half the people will hate you. Trump took a stand. You like him or you don't like him, doesn't really matter. But because he took such a hard stance, he got people to move, take action, vote, and uh, he got his thing. So when you asked me about college, we decided as a company, especially going to 2019, it's no longer, like the conversation around college right now is this. Is college really worth it? Like, should you do it? Like, nobody really wants to say no and be the one to slam college. Then people like, there's this really middle ground, right? That people are writing. Let me be very clear. Fuck college for entrepreneurs. It's the world's largest legal scam for entrepreneurs that I believe that exists in the world. Think about it, it's a four year degree. The first two years you have to pay just as much, but you learn nothing about the thing that you're doing. It's also not specialized. You say you go to college to get a business degree because you want to open up a restaurant. You spend six months with somebody who actually owns a successful restaurant, you will learn 50 times more for a fraction of the price. It's a fucking legal scam. The way that they're getting paid schools is from fucking people borrowing money from the government to give to them, not completing college and just owing a bunch of cash and paying off a crazy amount of interest. That's a fucking scam. So for us is we're literally attacking it straight up. like. Uh, Gene Pool, we teach shit for entrepreneurs that you can't learn in school. It's 109 fucking dollars. I teach live here in the studio every single week, and we just teach you shit that you actually need to know. And so it's the most affordable education on the planet. It's the most entertaining. We bring in guests once a month of entrepreneurs who actually do it. You're not just learning from people who are reciting or regurgitating shit from a textbook. textbook. So we're in fucking war with college for entrepreneurs. Yeah, Notice I keep saying for entrepreneurs. For entrepreneurs. Like there's... There's other shit that it may work for for entrepreneurs. It's the biggest fucking joke of all time. I, I like that you say that. And I love that if people could pick that up, I, sometimes I tell people, don't just listen to what we're talking about up here, especially for my elite guys and the guys I work with closely. I'm like, listen, don't listen to what Billy's saying up here. Think about why he's saying it. Mm -hmm. The way you just took that stand, you just taught us right there. Yeah. You're like, entrepreneurs need to take a stand for something. They can't be in the middle ground in the gray area. You got to pick a side. And they say that if you're liked by everyone, you're loved by no one. Mm. But if you're loved, you're going to be hated. Like yep. you just said, and then you went and did it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's funny because right like, right, our ads have now been seen, I don't know, over almost 400 million times now. And with that, obviously, we have a lot of big time fans. But with that, we have a lot of trolls. And people will comment on our shit and say, scam. And I just laugh. Look, you're the same motherfucker who spent $150,000 to go to college to get a fucking piece of paper that literally gives you zero transferable skills. And you, they don't offer a refund po policy or anything. You're not writing letters to them talking about how you got scammed? Are you fucking me? Like, it's just the most mind-boggling thing ever, but it just shows people are brainwashed. You know, we're brainwashed by our experiences and by, you know, mainstream media bullshit, so... We're looking to change that. I'm excited about well, it. Well, first off, I just appreciate being able to come here in the office to do Thank an actual coming. live interview. I've only done them with Russell Brunson and Jay Abraham. Nice. That's the only two, so you're the third one. I appreciate you. Uh, just because, you know, obviously interviews are great and you can do audio, but there's something different. The reason you have in-person learning yeah. is because you get more from it. I got more from this interview than I do from any of my audio ones because mm. I just don't learn that well yeah. virtually. I don't like it. I just don't. When they say there's and power so, in proximity. 100% because I say that some things are better caught than taught. 
Oh, I like that. that. You're here, I'm learning, but I'm also picking up on things that you're doing. And I, like so I think that. it's important with the mentor. Tot than tot. That's good. Yeah, I'm it's, it's it. become a little trend thing. So my last thing then, I, I always talk about like what it is to be a three-dimensional businessman. I think it's interesting because someone had said to me, if you were to go and be the mentor of your younger self, like are you being a person that you think your younger self should be mentored by? And I was like, oh my goodness. Or for you, it'd be like, they say, are you the man that you'd allow your daughter to marry? (laughs) I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such a crazy question. There was most of my life, it would be a hard no. I think now, (laughs) I would would allow her to date me. I wouldn't allow her to marry me yet, but I would allow her to date me. That's where I'm at. So describe to me like a little bit of of who that man is. Like, Mm. what does he do? How does he act? And just describe who that person is that would be what we'd call three-dimensional businessman, but I'm sure for you, using some of those other topics. The guy who I would allow my daughter to date doesn't exist. To marry, yeah. Doesn't exist. So, that's that. I love it. I'm just kidding. No, yeah, yeah. I'll answer that. Um, but seriously. It's like, like but if you resemble okay. any of these things, you're still not fit, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't get any ideas. You never date. She's, she's, she's with me. Daddy's girl forever. So, <laughs> so I know. Um, I think for the, I think the person needs to be progressing to be world class. Something we talk about a lot in company. Uh, world class, like meaning, it doesn't really matter. Like some people, actually, so a lot of people, especially in parents, they say, I just want my kid to be happy. Fuck that. I obviously want her to be happy like everybody else, but my daughter, the resources that she's being born into this world with versus the other eight billion people on the planet, oh no, it's time to work, it's time to go. I feel the same way for anybody who would come into her life. And people need to obsess more about impact. So the first person that would ever even dare consider thinking about entering my daughter's life needs to be so obsessed with impact in whatever way that is to make people better. That is the fucking first criteria. Not the first. It's important. The other one would be trustworthy. Honest. So much sugarcoating shit. Honest. Just fucking keep it real. Even if it makes people uncomfortable, this is something that we could all work on. But it's super honest. And, um, you know, responsible, kind, you know, the usual shit. And it's funny, like, the majority of the things are always things that we can control. 100%. It's not like, I always tell people, you know, the people that are out there right now that are focusing so hard, that are working super hard, I always say, if I were to go watch a movie straight up, I would rather watch a movie of a guy who fought his whole life for something he believed in and failed. Mm-hmm. Then watch a guy who sat there and wandered around aimlessly his entire life, God. but succeeded somehow. Wonder lost. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Work less. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent, man. Well, I appreciate you having us in here, and it was an awesome time. Man. Thank you, dude. That was yeah. great. Appreciate it. Got to talk about some, some real shit. Deep stuff. This is the first interview I've done in a while where I didn't talk about marketing. Felt good. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Appreciate you. Awesome, man. Hey, everybody watching, keep listening. That's all I got. Done. Cheers.